Hello everyone, my name is Ken and on behalf of Sandy Tours, I'd like to welcome you all to Manila. The bus ride to your hotel will take about an hour. Right now, I'd like to take a minute to familiarize you with the area and discuss some brief safety precautions. Firstly, I ask that you remain seated until we reach our destination and that you not eat or drink while on the bus. Secondly, please realize that it is against the law to get drunk in public. Enjoy your vacation, but do drink responsibly and do not drink and drive. Okay, first attraction we have for today is Intramuros. Intramuros is the only district of Manila where old Spanish era influences are still plentiful. Fort Santiago is now a well-maintained park and popular tourist destination. Adjacent to Fort Santiago is the reconstructed Maestranza Wall, which was removed by the Americans in 1903 to widen the wharves, thus opening the city to Pasig River. One of the future plans of the Intramuros administration is to complete the parameter walls that surround the city, making it completely circumnavigable from the walkway on top of the walls. If you are a golf lover on your left, then you will be very glad to know that there is a golf course within the premises of the walled city. Here you can even play golf at night because of the good lighting, and you will enjoy it very much. Actually, Intramuros served as the seat of the government of the Captaincy General of the Philippines, a component realm of the Spanish Empire, housing the colony's governor general from its founding in 1571 until 1865, and the real audience of Manila until the end of Spanish rule during the Philippine Revolution of 1898. Up next is the Muralia Street in a few seconds. Our next destination is the Muralia Street. Intramuros is known as the Old Manila as the enclave was practically the city when the Philippines was under Spain. Streets are generally narrow as they were designed at a time when there were no motor vehicles like automobiles, jeepneys, buses, or trucks. People walk or rode on horses. Luxury vehicles were carriages while goods were carried by carts or people. Street literally means wall. The street is located at the inner edge of the walls before they consisted of three different streets. The Calle Fondition Fondry is the current PLM stretch of the walls. Calle Baluarte fronting the San Juan de Letran and the original Calle Muralla behind the San Juan de Letran. Hello everyone, we are now here inside the Intramuros. And if you look to your right, you will see the, one of the most important historical sites in Manila, the Fort Santiago. Just to share with you, Fort Santiago was a fortress built in the late 1500s by the Spanish government during the colonization of Manila. As part of Intramuros, it served as a storage for ammunition and converted into a prison cell for activists and the political resistance. So what can we see in Fort Santiago? Well, you can admire Fort Santiago both from inside and out. You can see a recreation of a Cerizal cell, the courtroom where this trial was held, and an actual dungeon where some horrifying events happened. Why is Fort Santiago important? So the history of Fort Santiago plays an important role as this was the site of some of the Philippines' most historic events like Rizal's imprisonment and the colonizers' torture to Filipinos and Americans. As you look outside your window, you can see the Manila Cathedral. And just to give you a short idea about Manila Cathedral, Manila Cathedral or Minor Basilica and Metropolitan Cathedral of Immaculate Conception is the eighth structure to rise on this site. First Church of Nipa and Bamboo built in 1571, but was burned in 1583. Second Cathedral built of stone and mortar in 1591, but again destroyed by a devastating 1599 and 1600 earthquakes. The following cathedrals either destroyed by devastating earthquakes, typhoons, and battles. The present day cathedral was built from 1953 to 1958, elevated to the rank of minor basilica by Pope John Paul II in 1981, and officially named as Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. And now we are here to our 
our destination, which is San Agustin Church. The opening hours of San Agustin Church is daily at 8 a.m. to 12 noon and closes and reopen at 1 p.m. to 6 p.m. daily, including Sundays and holidays. San Agustin Church is the oldest stone church in the country and chosen as UNESCO Heritage Site in 1993. The church was an eventful past. It is known as the Church of St. Paul and originally built in 1571 as the first church of the Augustinian order. Now, the first disaster occurred in 1574 when the Chinese pirates destroyed it. Then, in the next 12 years, it had a problem with fire and was burned to the ground twice in 1583 and again in 1586. It has then decided to rebuild the St. Augustine Church in stone and rebuilding it started in 1587 and took to 1604 to be completed. However, just because it was built in stone, it didn't mean it was not going to uh, have a easy life. It survives the earthquakes of 1645, 1754, 1863, and 1880 not a bad effort. The San Agustin Church Manila was ransacked by the British in 1762 and was damaged during the Battle of Manila at the end of World War II in 1945. In a way, it has spared battle than other in intramuros, in particularly Manila Cathedral. Right beside and physically adjoining is the San Agustin Museum. Entry to both is free. However, you are expected to make a donation when you enter the museum. The interior of San Agustin Church Manila has magnificent trump loyal murals covering the walls and the ceilings and you really have to see them to understand the work that must have gone into them to create such an incredible piece of art. Okay guys, who so like museums? Of course, we all like arts and history. Okay, so the most popular museum here in our country is the National Museum of the Philippines located in Rizal Park. The National Museum is the old legislative building and the National Museum Art Gallery. Art Gallery, yeah. Art Gallery was once the Congress building. Okay? It is part of the National Museum Complex which boasts three other attractions, the National Museum of Fine Arts, the National Museum of Anthropology, and the National Museum um, Planetarium. Okay, do you know that Lolong, the largest recorded crocodile in the world, is inside the National Museum? Who knows? I'm just kidding, but the, the replica of Lolong lies inside the museum and also the preserved bones of Lolong. It is one of the highlights um, display in the National Museum. Later, when we go in funny pictures and wacky poses, wacky poses is not allowed inside. Okay, guys? Okay, thank you. Our next destination is Manila City Hall. Manila City Hall is located in the historic center of Ermita, Manila. Manila City Hall during 1901 was made up of Oregon pine which covered one third of the area used by the current building. The Manila City Hall was criticized because of monotony, lack of entrances, and the, the clock tower location. But after years of its continued existence, the critics praised the design for its original intent. After the war, the city hall was rebuilt through the war reparation program of the United States and was criticized due to the shape of its floor plan, which looked like a coffin or a shield of the Knights of Templar. According to urban legends, it was made to look like a coffin to pay homage to those who died during the Battle of Manila. We are now approaching the Quezon Bridge, or formerly known as Puente Culcante. Guys, you can look on your windows while listening to me. As you can see on the structure, it was designed as an art deco style art and it was inspired from the design of Sydney Harbour Bridge. So this bridge 
was constructed in 1939 under the regime of Quezon as to why it is called Quezon Bridge. This bridge connects Manila District of Quiapo and Ermita across Pasig River. Good day! I am Reina and I will be touring you for today. We will be heading to Parish of St. John the Baptist or more popularly known as Quiapo Church. It was originally built as small church of a Franciscan friars in the year 1588 and constructed under the supervision of a Franciscan friar named Antonio de Nombela, which is also the first parish priest. But in 1929, a huge fire destroyed the church and was reconstructed by Father Magdaleno Castillo in 1933. So, as I said, Quiapo Church is a 1933 replacement of an older structure destroyed by fire. It is also home of the Black Nazarene, which is an image of Christ that is life-size statue, carved from ebony and believed to be miraculous. Quiapo Church has so much stories to tell. Many people say if that church could only talk, it will surely relay every experience that it was able to face for decades. So, those are some facts that Quiapo Church have. Good day, my dear passengers. I am Janine, and I am your tour guide for today. Kindly take note of my name because you will be needing my help anytime and anywhere within the day. Our next itinerary is Dangwaritiro. So take a look at your right side because we will now be passing by the front space of Dangwaritiro. Dangwa Flower Market, also known as the Bulaklaka ng Maynila, is a fresh flower market in the Sampaloc area of Manila in the Philippines. The market is composed of several small individually owned stalls and street vendors selling flowers wholesale and retail from 50 to 90% cheaper than Metro Manila's flower shops. And in 2004, it was home to 50 flower vendors and most vendors, but not all, are members of the Dango Flower Market Association. And the market is centered on Dos Castilla Street at the intersection with Dimasalang Road extending to other streets like Claxon Avenue and Maria Clara Street. We're here guys. If you look to your right side, you can see the La Loma Cemetery. The La Loma Cemetery is the oldest cemetery in Manila with an area less than 54 hectares. It was opened in 1884 and was known as Cementerio de Benondo. Back then, when it was exclusively used as a burial ground for Catholics during the Spanish colonial period. The Loma Cemetery is a natural cultural treasure for its historical, cultural, and artistic value. Today, the cemetery is the one of the most beautiful and oldest cemetery in the country. It was currently owned and managed by the city government of Manila and a resting ground to some of the country's prominent personalities and heroes, including Chief Justice Cayetano Arellano, and Victorino Mapa, and a Girl Scout founder of the Philippines, Josepa Elianes Escoda. And now, we move to our next destination. The destination is Manila North Cemetery. The Manila North Cemetery is one of the oldest cemeteries in Metro Manila, Philippines. The cemetery is owned by and located in the city of Manila, the national capital, and is one of the largest in the metropolis at 54 hectares. The cemetery, formerly known as Cementerio del Norte, was laid out in 1904. The cemetery in its entirety was once called Pangundo, the area national hero Jose Rizal selected as his final resting place. Good afternoon, my dear tourists. I am Javel Kahambing, but you can call me Ate Ganda, your tour guide for today. And it's my pleasure to be one of your service. By the way, I would like you to meet our coach captain, Donnie. Say hello to Donnie. If you look outside, we are now passing by to Lakson Avenue. And let me tell you some details about Lakson Avenue, Manila. Lakson Avenue is the principal northwest-southeast artery located in Sampaloc District in Northern Manila, Philippines. It is a 6 to 8 lane median divided avenue that runs approximately 2.9 kilometers from Tayuman Street in Santa Cruz to Nagtahan Bridge in Santa Mesa. 
Laxon Avenue is the principal northwest southeast artery located in Sampaloc District in Northern Manila, Philippines. It is a 6 to 8 lane median divided avenue that runs approximately 2.9 kilometers from Tayuman Street in Santa Cruz to Nagtahan Bridge in Santa Mesa. It is a component of Circumferential Road 2 of the Manila Arterial Road Network and N140 of the Philippine Highway Network. Avenue was originally named Forbes Street or Governor Forbes Street after William Cameron Forbes, Governor General of the Philippines under whose administration the road was begun. It was extended south to meet Kay Nagtahan or Nagtahan Street at the boundary of San Paloc, San Miguel, and Santa Mesa at the old Carriedo Rotonda. When the Puntun Bridge of Nagtahan that connected it to Pandakan south of the Pasig River was built. Nagtahan Bridge was renamed to Mabini Bridge in 1967, while in 1971, Governor Forrest Street was renamed to Arsenio H. Lacson Street after the Manila Mayor of the 1950s. Landmarks that you can see here are Andalusia Basketball Court, Dangwa Flower Market, Dominican School of Manila, Iris, Hospital of the Infant Jesus, Mercury Drug, Sampaloc Fire Station, SM City San Lazaro, SM Save More Nagtahan, University of Santo Tomas, University of Santo Tomas Hospital. That's all you can see here at Lacson Avenue, Manila. And now we're here at the stretch of Jesus Corner, Carina Avenue Extension. President El Pedro Quirino Avenue, or more commonly known as Quirino Avenue, is a 610 lane divided highway in Manila, Philippines. It transports 3.6 kilometers in the northeast southwest direction from Nagtahan Bridge across from Santa Mesa in the north to Rojas Boulevard in Malate in the south. It passes through Paco and Pandacan districts, where it also serves as a truck route between Port Area and South Luzon Expressway, or SLEX as we all know. North of Nagtahan Bridge, the road continues as Laxon Avenue. It is designated as part of Circumferential Road 2. And now let me give you a glimpse of its history. Its construction dates back to the early 19th century under Spanish rule when Carino Avenue extension was first laid out as Calle Canonigo in Paco. The road leading to Nagtahan Bridge then was a narrow street called Calle Lengo in Pandacan. By the late 1920s, under the United States Insular Government, the Paco Santa Mesa Road was constructed, which was later named Thomas Claudio Street. Following the Burnham Plan for Manila, the road was further extended to meet Harrison Boulevard that around southwest from Cali Heran, now that is called Pedro Hill Street, up to Dewey Boulevard, now that is known as Rojas Boulevard. The whole length of the highway that forms part of Circumferential Road 2 was later named in honor of the 6th President of the Philippines, El P. Jocarino. The landmarks that we will encounter here in the stretch of Carino Avenue are Aloha Hotel, Asociación de Damas de Filipinas, Bureau of Plant Industry, Manila Zoological and Botanical Garden, Old Paco Railway Station, Hospital ng Manila Medical Center, Malacanang Hospital, Paraiso ng Batang Manila Park, Philippine Colombian Association, which you will see here in our right side as we speak, and of course, Plaza Dilao, and of course, President Alpijo Quirino Monument, which we will encounter later as we go along. So, now we're here at Paco Park. Did you know that Paco Park used to be a cemetery? No? Well, during the Spanish colonization period, Paco Park used to be a cemetery for the wealthy Spanish family. Did you know whose bodies were buried there? Who knows? Okay, here's a trivia. Dr. Jose Rizal's remains were originally buried at Paco Cemetery until it was interred in at Lucena Park in 2012. Paco Park was declared a national park in 1966 and was dubbed the most beautiful park in the Philippines. Go, look at your left and see the beautiful Paco Park. <laughs> 